Phil Kessel has been traded to the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for Alex Galchenyuk and Pierre Oliver Joseph. When Phil Kessel got traded, I was in disbelief. Even though we've been hearing these rumors going back from last summer, all of this summer, I didn't expect it to actually happen. I never really saw the possibility of Phil Kessel not being a Penguin anymore, or at least for the near future. And obviously seeing the trade happen today, my first instinct was to hate the trade. I was so ready to be done with Jim Rutherford. As the pieces were coming out slowly, slowly, I still wasn't giving in. I was ready to say that this was a bad trade, that the Penguins lost this trade. And I was really, really close with being fully done with Jim Rutherford until I stopped letting the emotions get the best of me. I stood up, I looked at the trade, I broke it down. And that's where I realized, you know what Jim Rutherford? You didn't do a bad job. This is not a bad trade from Jim Rutherford. Now, before I give my thoughts on the trade, I wanna just thank Phil Kessel here first in the beginning of the video. I will never ever forget Phil Kessel's time here as a Pittsburgh Penguin. He was a huge part of making history, winning back-to-back -back cups. He was no passenger on this run. He was one of the big reasons. If it wasn't for Phil Kessel, the Penguins don't get to see not even one cup. Phil Kessel just got traded and instead of thanking him or whatever, I've seen multiple media members say how you can't win with Phil Kessel. Phil Kessel's time here was over, blah, blah, blah. How can you even say that after this guy brought not just one, but two cups? Phil Kessel's time here was unfortunately done. It happens in sports. I just hate how the media is using this to prove their stupid point on how you can't win with Phil or Phil never cared or whatever. You can win with Phil Kessel. Phil Kessel actually does care. If Phil Kessel didn't care, we wouldn't be back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions right now. I just wanna correct myself before I see it in the comments. Yes, I know I just said we wouldn't be back-to-back -back champions right now. You guys get what I mean. I meant right now as in, in general, we wouldn't be back-to-back -back champions. I know we're not back-to-back -back champions currently. You don't have to remind me. I know it's a sad world we live in. <laughs> Anyways, get on to the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of this little rant. And I'm speaking directly to the media that hates him. I doubt they're watching this video, but guys like Steve Simmons, guys like Mark Madden, these guys I've seen for months, years, try and run Phil Kessel out of town. Onto what's important here, and that is thank you so much to Phil Kessel on a great four years here. As long as I live, I'm never gonna forget those back-to-back -back cup runs. Those are forever gonna be the best years of my life. And Phil Kessel and that HBK line was a big part of the first one, and Phil Kessel was also a big part of the second one. Coming from the bottom of my heart and all Penguins fans, Thank you so much, Phil Kessel, for all you've done. And Arizona, you're getting a great one here in Phil Kessel. I hope you guys make the playoffs next year. I think you will make the playoffs next year. And you'll see how much Phil Kessel cares in the playoffs. And hopefully you make a run with Phil Kessel. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much, Phil. Now, on to the trade. And before I get into Galchenyuk, I was also a little upset that we didn't get a first-round pick in this trade until I realized... Pierre Oliver Joseph in this trade was pretty much the first round pick. But instead of waiting till next year to draft with the Coyotes first round pick, then you have to wait around what, two to four years for that first round pick to come into the NHL. You're getting a guy who was our first round pick. He's been drafted for two years now. So he's two years into his development. All I'm trying to say is Joseph is way more valuable than a first round pick would have been because Joseph pretty much acts like the first round pick in this trade. He was a first two years ago. He's like I said, around one or two years away rather than the actual first round pick which we would have had to wait till next year to draft with. And then it would have been ready, like I said, in two to four years. By then, the Penguins are fully done contending, I think, in my opinion. But anyways, let's get on to the real piece of this trade, and that is Alex Galchenyuk. What are my thoughts on Galchenyuk? So like I said earlier in the video, I actually didn't mind this trade from Jim Rutherford. I think Jim Rutherford didn't do bad with this trade, and let me explain why. Alex Galchenyuk is a great player. I've been following Galchenyuk, and I've wanted the Penguins to trade for Galchenyuk back when he was in Montreal. Now, this right here is a big part of the trade. If the Penguins re-sign Alex Galchenyuk to a good contract long-term, I honestly think the Penguins win this trade. If the Penguins lose Galchenyuk for nothing next summer, this is a loss. The earliest Galchenyuk will be eligible to sign a new contract will be this July 1st, as his contract is up next July 1st. You know, you can sign it a year before. I think the Penguins should do that. Do not play the season and sign him next year, because I definitely do think he will find a match with either Crosby or Malkin. I think Malkin. I think he can score 30 goals. He's done it before with the Montreal Canadiens. And he's probably going to get around 60 points if he hits with Malkin or Crosby. You don't want to sign Galchenyuk coming off of his best season going into as a UFA. Because you're going to lose him for nothing. Because he's going to ask for what? 6.57 million? I'm thinking around 5-6 years at around 5.5 million in that ballpark. I think that's a pretty fair deal for both teams. But that's also a risk. Because if he doesn't hit then you're stuck paying 5.5 million for the next five years for a guy who just doesn't work out. But unfortunately, in sports, you have to take risks. I think this is a risk you have to take because if Galchenyuk does break out, which I think he can, the Penguins have done this before with their young players, 
You want to get him at a team-friendly deal and not sign him at what seven, seven point five million, probably six high sixes. And trust me, you're gonna to want to save as much as money as you can because let me just say the Penguins are gonna have quite the busy summer next year. They have to re-sign Matt Murray, who is an RFA, Jared McCann, who's also an RFA, Dominic Cahoon, assuming he also has a breakout year. He's also thankfully an RFA. Dominic Simon shouldn't be too expensive. Justin Schultz, who's a UFA, and Alex Galchenyuk who's also a UFA. I also don't think the Penguins are done here. So before I fully judge this trade, I also think this is setting up something else that can potentially make the Penguins even better. If I'm being completely honest, I don't think the Penguins are a better team today than they were yesterday. In my opinion, Phil Kessel is still a better player than Alex Galchenyuk, but Alex Galchenyuk is a really solid player. And like I said, if this is part one of a two-part trade, let's say you make another trade for a top nine winger or a top four defenseman, or you use that extra cap space that you have now and sign a free agent come July 1st. I did hear Jim Rutherford say something about him being more active in free agency now because he has that extra 1.9 million that he saved up from trading Phil Kessel. In total now, he has 5 million to spend in free agency. If he uses that on the right player, I think the Penguins could be a better team coming next year than they were yesterday. Because like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not done with Jim Rutherford yet. Some of you may be, some of you might have been a long time ago, but I'm still not done with him. These next couple of days are gonna decide how I feel on Jim Rutherford. Is he gonna make this team way better or is he gonna do nothing at all? Or is he gonna make this team worse by signing another Jack Johnson in free agency? Now let's hope that doesn't happen. Speaking of Jack Johnson, a lot of fans, including myself, were really frustrated that Jack Johnson wasn't a part of this deal. Arizona has been known for taking bad contracts for years now, but them acquiring Phil Kessel to me proves that they're trying to win now. They're trying to make the playoffs next year. And they knew that if they take on Jack Johnson, their chances get worse of making the playoffs because he's not a good player. Honestly, I think if you can find a trade partner for Jack Johnson and clear up that 3.2 million off the books for nothing at all, trade him for a seventh round pick, that's a really, really great move. Try and go to Ottawa. I'm hearing they need to add cap space to hit the floor. They need around 11 million. I don't know if they're willing to take the four years left on Jack Johnson, but hit them up. Maybe throw in good Branson too. Honestly, I'd be willing to part ways with a potential first round pick if they could take one of or both of Good Branson and Jack Johnson. And just to clarify, no, I don't think Good Branson has been bad ever since he's been traded from Vancouver, but I still would not pass up on the opportunity to get rid of his $4 million cap hit. And if he does it before July 1st, that would give the Penguins just over $8 million in cap space to sign free agents with on July 1st. And if you use it correctly, $8 million can get you two to three solid depth players or one really solid top six forward or top four defenseman. Now, depending on how you use that cap space, that can really improve this team going into next year, adding a guy like Galchenyuk, Cahoon, and now let's say another top six forward or top four defenseman with that cap space. So definitely excited to see what Jim Rutherford does these next couple of days. And before I wrap up the video, I wanna say one more thing regarding Alex Galchenyuk. I really hope the Penguins don't make the same mistake the Canadians and Coyotes made with Alex Galchenyuk. Both teams played him at center first, it didn't work out, and then they just moved him over to wing as in, hey, you suck at center, do this now. That ruins a player's confidence big time. Forget the whole center thing, it just doesn't work out. Don't even try it out, don't ruin his confidence at all. You're gonna take him and you're gonna tell him, you are a winger now, you're a great winger, don't forget the center thing. You're a great winger. You're going to play alongside one of Crosby or Malkin, and you're going to do a great job playing with them because you are a solid winger. You got to show him confidence and trust in him. That's something the Canadians and Coyotes both didn't do. And players certainly feel when their teams don't trust them. And that's a big reason why Justin Schultz did so bad with the Oilers, but did so great with the Penguins because the Penguins trusted him from day one. And look how he is right now. In my opinion, I think he's just lacking a bit of the confidence because he's definitely not lacking skill. Galchenyuk is a really skilled player. We're all going to slowly fall in love with him because he's a really, really good player. So if you show him the trust and build his confidence, he will be a solid, solid winger for the Penguins and a potential 30-35 goal scorer and he's done it before too he's done it with the Montreal Canadiens so if he scored 30 with the Montreal Canadiens I definitely think he can score 30 alongside either Malkin or Crosby that's all I have to say on this trade overall thoughts I think both teams win this trade both teams get what they want and I think the Penguins can come out as long-term winners depending if they sign Galchenyuk long-term and if he finds that chemistry with Malkin or Crosby. Give me your thoughts on this trade. There's going to be a lot of mixed reviews. A lot are probably not going to like it. Trust me, that was me in the beginning of it. I still don't like it as much. I pretty much just don't like the idea of Phil Kessel not being a Penguin anymore, but I really do like the return. So give me your thoughts on this trade. There's no wrong answer. If you don't like it, tell me why. If you like it, tell me why. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I should come out with another video within the next 48 hours, assuming Jim Rutherford's not done. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting 48 hours. And again, if you're interested in watching more videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.